video tutorials on basic medical sciences presented by the Medical Forum, videos on cell biology, physiology, biochemistry, pharmacology, pathology, histology, and much more. Please like and leave your comments below, and please do subscribe and like our Facebook page mentioned in the description. So, today's topic is thyroid tumors. So, before I start talking about thyroid tumors, it's easy to get uh, acquainted with the definition of goiter. Goiter is basically an enlargement of the thyroid gland. So, this goiter can either be a diffused goiter or a nodular goiter. So, in cases of nodular goiter, it can be either a solitary nodule or it can be a multinodular. So, all these goiters can be divided according to its thyroid function. So it can be either a hypothyroid goiter or it can be a euthyroid goiter or it can be a hyperthyroid goiter. Same goes to the solitary nodule and uh, same goes to the multinodular goiters as well. So in all cases the thyroid function matters. Speaking about uh, diffuse goiters which are hyperthyroid, we should always remember about Graves disease which is an autoimmune condition which will be discussed in a different lecture. If there are goiters which are either hypo or euthyroid in function, uh, it could be either uh, an iodine deficiency which could lead to the increase in the gland size. It could be either due to a congenital defect uh, in thyroxine hormone synthesis that could also lead to the gland enlargement. It could also be due to the increased demand, uh, for instance, in pregnancy and in puberty, the body's metabolic demands increase, so it requires more uh, thyroxine production. And also, goitogens are really common. For instances, they are present in some drugs and foods like lithium carbonate, cabbage and tapioca. So they are the chemicals which can stimulate the growth of the gland. Now when talking about nodular goiters, there are solitary nodules and multinodular ones. When you talk about solitary nodules, if there are solitary nodules with euthyroid function always you have to exclude malignancies so malignancies are always solitary nodules which are euthyroid but if you see a solitary nodule which are hyperthyroid in function it's always a toxic nodule on the contrary multinodular goiters if you see hypothyroid and euthyroid in function they are always the common long-standing multinodular goiters which doesn't complain in uh, significant uh, complaints but the multinodular goiters which are hyperthyroid uh, are always associated with plumber's disease which will also be discussed in a different lecture so that's the overview of goiters so what makes a goiter to be more likely malignant. The age below 15 and above 65 and uh, male sex and mostly a solitary nodule, more specifically a firm or a hard fixed nodule than a soft nodule. Uh, if, it, if it had recently appeared or if there is any recent change in a long standing multinodular goiter or if there is any voice changes due to the recurrent laryngeal nerve invasion or if there is any present in tracheal obstruction or if there is Horner syndrome which will be discussed in another video it consists of partial ptosis, pupil constriction, enough thalamus and decreased sweating and if there is any presenting cervical lymphadenopathy, the associations I'll explain you later on. And uh, if there is any pulsatile lump on the skull, which also I will explain you later. And also very sign, which I will explain each and everything in detail. 
and this is the histological structure of the thyroid gland in short so the thyroid gland consists of thyroid follicles and the follicles contain the colloid and the matrix presents with the extracellular matrix and uh, the blood vessels and the parafollicular C cells so each and every thing is included in this diagram how do we study the types of cancers in the thyroid gland we just have to look at the histology of the gland nothing much it's really simple so the follicular cells there are parafollicular c cells and lymph follicles each neoplasia can be either well differentiated or poorly differentiated it's simply as that so a well differentiated follicular cell will develop a papillary carcinoma a poorly differentiated one will develop an anaplastic carcinoma medullary carcinomas are from the parafollicular c cells and the lymphomas are from lymph follicles these are the thyroid tumors there is papillary carcinomas there is follicular carcinomas there is anaplastic carcinomas and there is med medullary carcinomas so these are the main carcinomas which we are interested in, papillary follicular anaplastic and medullary so papillary carcinomas papillary carcinomas they are usually multifocal and they are not encapsulated so they don't have a capsule so the most frequent cause of papillary carcinomas are previous radiations so the patients with papillary carcinomas normally they don't present with compressive symptoms so they have no symptoms at the beginning so the papillary cell carcinomas are follicular epithelial cells in origin and this is the most frequent carcinoma around 60% of thyroid carcinomas are papillary carcinomas and you will see the age group being between 20 and 40 years and there is a local infiltration in papillary carcinoma and most importantly the lymphatic spread you can remember it like this that the papillary ends with a y and y is the beginning letter of yellow and lymph is yellow so it spreads through lymph but not blood the prognosis of this is really good it has a 90 percent uh, chance of a five year survival and the most common investigations like the most needed investigations are the ultrasound scan and the fine needle aspiration cytology through this um, the cellular abnormalities can be found like samoma bodies and often any nuclei the pictures i will be posting it uh, later towards the end of the video when you are talking about treatment it's basically a total thyroidectomy and after the total thyroidectomy if the lymphatic node spread is confirmed uh, we should do a cervical block dissection and once the surgery is done the patient should be put on lifelong thyroxine in high dose so that to prevent uh, TSH stimulation follicular carcinomas they are usually unifocal on the contrary uh, this cancer can occur in pre-existing multinodular goiters and they are very high in endemic goiters areas so these patients always present with compressive symptoms so they have difficulty in breathing so this cancer also has a follicular epithelial cell origin and this is the most the second most frequent uh, cancer so it's like around 20 percent uh, distribution so the age if you see the age it's around 40 to 60 years so when we are talking about the lymphatic spread there is no lymphatic spread but blood spread yes you can remind remember it like the follicular word ending in R and R is the word for red and red is blood so 
follicular carcinoma spread through blood and not through lymph. And investigations are, are ultrasound scan and FNAC. And mostly FNACs come inconclusive because there is a difficulty in distinguishing if the follicular carcinoma is different to the normal cell. So if there is any problem, an inconclusive decision, we go for a hemithyroidectomy and then we go for a biopsy and check the tissues and if it coincides with uh, a malignancy you go ahead and do the complete thyroidectomy and then put the patient on lifelong thyroxine so that the TSH suppression can be uh, performed. Anaplastic carcinomas on the contrary they are extremely aggressive carcinomas they are extremely aggressive and 50% of the cases are inoperable at the time of diagnosis. So these cancers are also presenting with compressive symptoms. So patient complains with the difficulty in breathing. Uh, these cancers are also having a follicular cell origin and the frequency of these cancers are around 10% and mostly we see the anaplastic cancers in old age more than 60 years old. This cancer massively infiltrates, it massively infiltrates locally and if you are talking about lymph spread and blood spread, both of them in massive amounts. That's why they are so aggressive cancers, anaplastic carcinomas. The prognosis is so poor that 90% of the patients die in the first year. So the prognosis is really bad and when we are talking about the investigations you need to talk about again the gold standard ultrasound scan and fine needle aspiration cytology the treatment here there is no thyroidectomies there is just external radiotherapy and relieving uh, compression just palliative therapy just isthmostectomy if there is any tracheal obstruction other than that there is no proper treatment medullary carcinomas they are 80% sporadic cancers and 20% familial cancers and they have a high association with multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome and this carcinoma secretes serotonin, they secrete prostaglandins, they secrete ACTH and even vasoactive intestinal polypeptides. So that's why classically medullary carcinomas can present with diarrhea as well due to the secretion of vasoactive intestinal polypeptide. So the origin of the medullary carcinoma is the parafollicular C cells. So this is the least common cancer, just 5% of all thyroid carcinomas are medullary carcinomas. The striking thing is the cancer is so slow growing and it is less spread through lymph, less spread through blood and there is a 50% of 5 year survival and once again the investigation is ultrasound scan and fine needle aspiration cytology. And now the most striking thing is very high amounts of calcitonin levels in blood. So the treatment is a total thyroidectomy and a cervical dissection if there is lymph node spread and then you need to put the patient under chemotherapy of uh, adriamycin and then uh, you need to screen the family members due to the familial origin and then you have to put the patient on lifelong thyroxine.